wanted to speak to you all about a topic that um, I think that we need to spend some more time um, thinking about. And I wanted to talk about the, uh, the benefits of prayer, why prayer is so important, why we need to spend more of our idle time praying. And, um, even The Bible even talks about praying for those in authority over us. It talks about pray for those who persecute you. You know, so I want to just give a few key points of why prayer is important in these times, especially in these times. The end times are here. Um, prophecy is steady, steady being fulfilled, and uh, we need to realize that prayer is um, our most effective tool. So the first point, um, prayer. Prayer humbles us as needy, and it exalts God as wealthy. So when we pray, we're giving the honor and the praise to the Lord. We're saying that we are nothing. Um, I made this statement when I was street preaching, but we, you and I, we are nothing more than beggars looking for bread and water. And Jesus is our bread and water. So when we go to him in prayer, when we use those that, that time that we have when we're really not doing anything, and we give that time to him, we're coming to him as needy, saying we are in need. And those prayers will be heard. If our heart is right, if we're really desperate for him the way we should be, then those prayers will be heard. Prayer is the antidote for the disease of self-confidence, which opposes God's goal of getting glory by working for those who wait for him. You know, it's very similar to if, you know, as basically as Christians, we're all sick. Before we, co before we come to the life of Christianity, we are all sick, and Jesus is the doctor. A lot of us go, just I'm going to use an analogy real quick just to kind of put it in context. It's like going to urgent care, and Jesus is the doctor, and you may wait to get to the doctor and you get impatient and you decide to leave. Someone else goes to the doctor and says, man, that doctor, man, I feel so much better now that I went to the doctor. You should go to the doctor too. So you go to the doctor and then the doctor gives you the remedy. He tells you what to do, what needs to be done to cure yourself. He writes you a prescription, basically telling you what you need to fix about yourself. And then it's up to you to use the free will given to you and I to exercise and put those things into practice. What we mess up at is we don't go and fill those prescriptions. We don't hearken unto the word that he's given us. Even the people that he sent out to bring people to the doctor, you know, saying, hey, I know the doctor that has the cure for your sickness. I know the doctor that can cure you of the disease that you have. But for whatever reason, we don't want to listen to that person. But that's why prayer is also key, because prayer allows us to become a manifestation of the Word of God. It allows us to carry out those acts of righteousness. Acts of righteousness are an expression of the Lord and an act of love for the Lord. Those are characteristics of righteousness and these are the things that Jesus wants us to demonstrate these are the things that he wants to implant in us but we have to realize that when we go to him in prayer we're putting ourselves in a place of humbleness and lowness and saying that he's the only one that really can lift us up and assign us that purpose and the duties that he has for us but we have to first go to him Going to him first before we make decisions. Going to him first before you start your day. Going to him with everything is how he gets the honor and the glory. And it removes self-confidence. Because what self-confidence does is it allows us to operate on our own. When we operate on our own, that's when the devil can come. Because like it says in Genesis, sin lieth at the door. If you do right. If you do right, you know, I will, I will appreciate what you do as long as you do right. That's what he told Abel. Or that's what he told Cain. I apologize. But we have to come to terms and realize that, that sin lieth at the door. Sin is at the door. When you open the door and Jesus is knocking, you need to say, come on in. 
Because if you ignore his visits and you ignore his calls, guess who else is calling? So we need, we need to realize that. Prayer prevents service from being an expression of pride. When we do things on our own merits and we forget about God, we forget to acknowledge Him and give Him the honor, then it puts us in a place of pride because now I feel like I did it. I did it by my own efforts. And a lot of us have achieved a lot of things on our own, mer on our own merits and our own efforts. So because we've accomplished these things without God, we don't feel the need to get on our knees and talk to Him and commune with Him throughout the day. Use your idle time and talk to God. Because what happens is when you don't honor God and when you, whatever you're doing does not demonstrate God or does not have God attached to it, that means that you're getting the honor and the praise. And God can't do anything with that. The Bible says He's not a respecter of persons. So He's not looking at your decorated um, career or your decorated company that you have, your uh, Better Business Bureau rating and all that. He doesn't care about any of that. He's looking at the source of the goodness. Did the source of this, what, you're, what you have attached to your life, derive from Him or did it derive from self? These are things that you have to spend some time pondering about. Prayer is the essential activity of waiting for God, acknowledging our helplessness and His power calling upon him for help and seeking his counsel. So when we pray, we're saying, look, Lord, I have this in front of me. I don't know what to do with it. I have a situation that I don't know how to go about dealing with. I need you, Lord, to lay out the footsteps so I can walk into them. I need you, Lord, to reveal to me your will for this and what you would have me to carry out according to your word. That is another essential uh, activity is waiting on the Lord and acknowledging our helplessness, acknowledging that within yourself, without Him, you can do nothing. You have to externally, you know, externally you need Him. You know, we need things externally. Everything around you, you need everything, like you need lights to see, you need food to live, you need water to stay hydrated. You know, you need things apart from yourself in order to live. Prayer empowers for the mission of love. So when you're praying, you're asking the Lord to open up your heart, to open up your mind, to receive the fullness of Him. And that empowers you the mission of love. You ask the Lord to assign you your purpose. The fruits of the Spirit will impart in you. And be, a, and be an outward expression in your life. The power of prayer is the prelude to spiritual awakening. The power of prayer is the prelude to spiritual awakening. A lot of us are spiritually dead. We're sitting in church in the pew spiritually dead sitting in church on our way to hell and we don't even know it. Lukewarm and don't even know it. That is another key component to prayer. It is a prelude to spiritual awakening. The veil will be removed. The scales will be removed for your eyes. You will be able to see. Because see, without spiritual awakening, without the Holy Spirit, there will always be something missing in your life. That's why you can turn on the TV and see these people on TV. They speak with such pontification, but still speak with, still be, and speak with such ignorance at the same time. Because they don't understand that this is a spiritual problem, and we need a spiritual awakening. There is not a physical solution to a spiritual problem, and we have a spiritual problem. John 15 and 17. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done to you. Simple as that. If your word abides in him, how do you learn his word? You spend some time reading it. 
spend some time meditating on it. Ask for it to be revealed to you in the fullest, in the fullest understanding that you need it to be. And last scripture, Matthew 9 and 38. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth labors into his harvest. See, the problem with the church body is the house is full, but the field is empty. Everybody wants to sit around the table and eat. Everybody wants to be in the house getting the blessings. Everybody wants to be in the house getting all of the benefits from the labor, but nobody wants to do the labor. So the field is empty. There's no one out in the field actually going amongst the people, going out to save the sinners. The only way to see people delivered from homosexuality, from the nation of Islam, from sexual lust, from all of these problems, from all of the sin that's running amok, the only way we're going to see the true deliverance is for us to get out in the field. But see, the church body has gotten so used to getting the benefits of being in the house that we don't want to go out in the field and get dirty. We don't want to go out in the field and be and be amongst the sheep. We don't want to be true shepherds as the Lord has ordained us to be. Some of us, the Lord hasn't even ordained us to be to be shepherds. We just have placed ourselves in that role. Someone has just catapulted us up into that role because we were confident enough within ourselves to stand up before people and lead. But the Lord really did not anoint us or ordain us to be in that position. So I invite you today to spend some time considering about where you stand with the Lord. Spend some more time in prayer. Spend some more time talking to the Lord. Spend some more time asking the Lord to help you carry out his mission and his will. Because there are many things that need to be done. This is a serious mission and I don't know if you're not paying attention but Christians are falling away by the thousands people are giving themselves up to Catholicism people are giving themselves up to being a Hebrew Israelite people are giving themselves up to just outright being an atheist saying God doesn't even exist saying they're being they're an agnostic where they don't know if God exists or not they just kind of on the fence about it we have all these different divisions going on within the world because see with the absence of God you're going to see confusion you're going to see ignorance and you're going to see suffering and you can turn on the TV you can even walk outside and you're going to see those three things every day confusion you're going to see them you're going to see confusion you're going to see ignorance and you're going to see suffering I don't know about you, but I'm tired of seeing the church body suffer. And I'm tired of seeing the church leaders not suffering for the advancement of the kingdom of God. See, if we look in the New Testament, even the Old Testament, everybody that was living for God was suffering. They were suffering. When people see you suffering for the word of God, when they see you standing boldly, and standing within the principles of God, things happening to you, maybe you're losing your job, you're losing your your uh, your financial security, your job, your, your family is losing their well-being, then that's when you can really open up people's hearts to receive the love of God. People say, man, because nobody wants to suffer. So when people see somebody willing to suffer for something so much that they believe in, being Jesus Christ, they're going to want to, they're going to inquire about what you believe in. They're going to want to know more. And that's when we can begin to win souls. And the Bible says, he that wins souls is is wise. I pray that you all continue to seek Jesus Christ. I hope that you come and know him as your personal Savior as I have. All I want to do with these videos is encourage you and strengthen your faith in the Word of God and challenge you to press into him. I pray that you continue to love the Lord and continue to ask Him to open your heart and your mind to receive everything that He has for you. And delight yourselves in the Lord. Amen.